right, you guys, welcome back to another episode of The Common Theory. I'm your host, Gator, along with the crew today. And today we actually have a special guest for you guys. So we're going to go down to introductions as always, see how everybody's been doing. And yeah, we'll start from there. Rohan, my bro, I know you've been going through some shit today. How's, how's everything been going, man? You yeah, right? man. Uh, I'm good. Uh, everyone's good and healthy and well. But uh, yeah, New York City is hit by a really bad storm this evening. Just driving my parents um, because the basement was taking on some water. Now about my dad. I also usually just go for my parents uh, for dinner on Sundays, me, my girlfriend, and our, and the dog. But yeah, it was like a harrowing drive there. It was like real crazy going there and this, and also just extra crazy coming back. It's funny because when we were there, the rain kind of let up. We're like, oh, it's fine. And then like 15 minutes into our drive back home, it just it was just like torrential. It was crazy. You can't see, you couldn't see like more than a foot. It was Damn. nuts. Like, you know, 65 mile an hour highways, everyone's going like 25 tops. <laughs> like everyone's hazards are on, just like... Cars and ditches everywhere, trees Man. down, power lines down, cops everywhere. It's mad, absolute madness. I saw multiple people go up on ramps on highways to just get off the highway, like against traffic. I was like, this is the Thunderdome. What? Damn. Man, man. What's happening? Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm happy to hear that you made it safe and everything, man. So we're good. We're here in time for the episode. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and Franklin, how you been doing, man? I know you had a exciting weekend. How's everything been going for you? Yeah, pretty good. Saturday, I had a very eventful day of just having to take my kid to dance and then having to pray prayer for my cousin's wedding. And then the whole wedding just took up the entire day. So I was just kind of upset. But wedding that, went fine. My son was the ring bearer. Um, the reception was great. Very great cool. wedding. Great reception. Our guest today is Lane, our editor. Welcome, welcome, and glad to have you here and your thoughts. But how you been doing, my bro? Everything good? Yeah, you know, just uh, living the dream, as we all <laughs> as we all do. Pretty mild, hot weather here, you know, just uh, 100 degrees for days on end, and then Oof. we get a little bit of a reprieve, and then it goes back to hot. And But we're like maybe like a month and a half out, and it'll start cooling off. This is the worst part of the year, so... Yeah, just uh, working and editing and you know, trying to play games when I can in between. With that said, let's uh, jump in. This is going to be our follow-up to the tier list. This is going to be the second half, you guys, and we're very excited to bring this to you. And we brought Islane on to give even more thoughts because a lot of these commanders aren't part of the norm. A lot of these many people don't see too often out there in the wild, and Islane is very familiar with it mid-range style of the format and we brought them on to give even more thoughts a little bit more feedback for you guys so you'll be a little bit more familiar with some of these off meta decks is lane i'd like you to start us off with our first one which is rosa rail hit us with it bro what are your thoughts so i think the dungeon mechanics are kind of cool uh because it adds like an extra element that's kind of outside of the game and it's like a bunch of different shit stapled onto one thing <laughs> And because there's the element of choice, you can pick and choose what's best for you at a given time, which is going to vary from game to game. I like that mechanic, and this is one of the legendary uh, creature commanders that are uh, legal in our format that fully relies on that mechanic uh, to do cool things. It's just kind of slow. Like, it can be fast, but it can be it's mostly slow. Because, uh, you know, getting the initiative when she hits the battlefield, great, you've got it. Now you have to keep it. And if you can't keep it, well, then you probably shouldn't have played her in the first place. There's a lot of variables there as far as, like, what creatures you play to try and maintain control of it, which is stuff like unblockable creatures or little cheap evasive creatures, things like of that nature. And then, you know, if you do manage to either just piecemeal it together or manage to, you know, pack in other creatures and other effects that will allow you to snowball your initiative uh, spree, as it were. Complete the first dungeon, then at that point she's online, so to speak, and then provides a pretty significant buff to creatures that should make your, you know, finishing the table off kind of easier. So she is kind of a mid-range deck that has a solid finishing game plan. The trouble is, is finishing a dungeon can sometimes just not happen before the combo decks already win. And then you kind of also are forced into a control role because you have to try and slow everybody down to let you win. And me and a lot of other people probably have the same opinion that uh, 
playing from behind is not as good as playing from ahead. I, I don't know. Me personally, I would be, rather be ahead than really be trying to play catch up or trying to stop people from winning. I'd rather be trying to win. Sounds like you're really high on it. Then you're really low on it. Then you're like, oh, you know what? Kind of. And then nope. And then a hey, nope. So where are you going to put that in this tier list? What, where do you think she belongs? Because of the reliance on the dungeons for her to do anything, I'd probably put her C. The potential is there to be powerful, but I think it's just, yeah, like, it kind of just, it doesn't do it fast enough. So let me poke at somebody. Uh, I do know, and I've actually been very high on Rohan's list in the past. And I know you're very familiar with this list, Rohan. What are your yeah, thoughts yeah. on Rizal? Um, I think I think she's really interesting. Um, just like as Lane said, I, she does a lot of things. She is kind of hard to remove you know once she hits the battlefield people also tend not to attack you because it's like a fat butt death touch creature it's black so it dodges a lot of the black removal spells of course you can still get hit in the air or hit by unblockable creatures or hit people can go wide on you to steal the initiative back but in the variant that i play i built it strictly as a combo list um it's not like ultra turbo combo but it does play a few rituals um to get her out quickly also to like start snowballing once you actually start accruing resources you draw into like a like a calling the week or something allows you to like play your lawyer revealed for example or whatever big draw spells that you have. Uh, I also play the max amount of blue flickers to flicker her on the end step of uh, before your turn, so you'll pretty much always get the initiative back. So you basically you're looking to get two initiative triggers every time you have a blink spell, and then using mancer effects to bring those blink spells and recur them back to your hand to just keep doing it to recur your value to find all your pieces for your combo. So that's kind of like the the nature of the list, I have found it to be actually extremely resilient. It's hard to interact against. It plays a decent amount of counter spells. It also plays a decent amount of removal. It can play like a medium control game, but what Islay said is correct in that it is slow. Um, I haven't played. I've played a decent amount of games with it, but I haven't played like enough games where I'm super comfortable to say that it plays exactly like X or Y. Um, I do think that because it relies on the Peregrine J combos very specifically, and there's no other combo in the deck that it does take a while to find. So you're playing a control game, which what happens is when you do that, it tends to drag the game out and it looks for draws a lot. And that is a problem. Mm -hmm. So I think if we had unlimited time, I actually think the deck is a C or a B tier deck, but we don't have unlimited time. We're talking about competitive. We're talking about tournament. We're talking about 80 or 90 minute rounds. And I would actually put it in D tier because of that, because Oof. the clock sets it significantly. What do you, what what is your opinion on that concert? Or what what is what tier do you like it to be in? Eh, probably C, because at least Rizzo Rail by itself, with the creature package that it has, and just hitting the final room a couple of times, which with infinite time we will hit, and even in ninety minutes you'll hit. You should hit the final room like at least once or twice. You should have enough power on board to close out a game. Well, so I'm actually over here with Rohan. I actually believe it's a D tier deck, uh, but we have two C's and two D's. So since Islane is our guest today, I'll put it in C for everybody. Um, but I think we have a pretty even split. We'll put it at the bottom of C tier. I agree with yeah. both of you guys with everything you're saying. I actually don't have any arguments at all for it. Truth yeah, told. I don't think it's been perfected yet. I think uh, there's I do agree room for, to figure out exactly the optimal play patterns with the deck and the optimal build. And I think that like a few other decks that we've already called out in our in our part one video, it, it suffers from having a lot of different um, variations of the deck and people build playing paths, it in a lot of yeah. different ways. A lot of different build paths, exactly. And I, I think agree. as we as it performs well and people keep playing the list, I think one of the things that I would like to do, you know, going into next year is to actually play this particular list more often to start figuring out what those optimal play patterns are. And then, you know, those divergent lists start coalescing on like a list that is more final. And I think we'll see it start performing better. Also, too, I did uh, forget to mention this about the list as well. It does have a few top fours at this point as well. Yeah. Um, specifically with a one individual, which means the deck has merit, um, in my opinion. 
And because that one individual has been topping several different events with, I believe they have three top fours. Uh, don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. Uh, but I believe it's three. And with that said, it, it does have merit. Like the deck mm -hmm. can get there. Yeah. But it's just like you said, uh, I agree with everything you guys said. I'm not going to reiterate what you guys said. Uh, let's move on. And Kunks, I think you're up with our next one. A yep. very spicy one. <laughs> but before we get to there, I wanted to first thank everyone who supports us on Patreon. Um, if you are the 41% who are not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Uh, hit subscribe, click on the bell to get notified. Uh, our videos go live every Monday at 10 a.m. And shorts go out every other weekday at 6, at 6 p.m. Eastern. And with that, we're, going, we're off to Sprite Dragon. Sprite Dragon is a two-mana 1-1 one, one that gets powered up for every instant and sorcery you play. So it's like TPI, but Voltron, and slower, and you're not really accruing board presence. So I'm not really too high on that, because we already have a couple other Is it commanders that kind of do the same thing better. Because Balmor is also just strictly combat-based. Crackling Drake is... What if that power just stayed on the creature the entire time? Because Crackling Drake cares about every instant of sorcery you've played so far that's in your graveyard. Sprite Dragon, once it gets removed once, you have to rebuild your Sprite Dragon. And with that, I am good with either D or dropping it completely and just telling people, if you want to play a Sprite Dragon, you have better options. Let me hit you with this. So I don't disagree with you, but let me put more of a, more of a scenario out there for you guys. I think this deck can yeet a player off the table easily, without a shadow of a doubt. I think yeah, I could, I could take you off the table. I don't, I don't agree with you saying it's slow. Do you speak? Uh, do you speak about that from experience? I do speak about that from experience. Uh, <laughs> well, granted, I was able to stop it two to three times before it yeeted me off the table, um, <laughs> but it still, it still did the job. It's very interesting because I do think the deck is fast. Um, I do not believe the deck is resilient whatsoever. Um, you bounce it once. It's just like Kunk said. It's it's a worse crackling Drake, right? That there are better versions of this card in the format. I understand the two mana versus the four mana. I just don't see where this doesn't have some sort of combo outlet plan. And I do agree with. Punks again, where it's like it, you're not establishing board presence. And with recent printings that we've had in the format with uh, what is that, Curse Marauder and all of these new sacrifice yeah. effects, this is not surviving if you are a one to two creature deck. It's you better hope you have days in hand indefinitely, right? You better hope hard evidence is the hardest card in your deck, right? <laughs> you need it every turn of every game. I know this is topped at least one to two events. But I am in the boat of drop. But uh, is Zane Rohan, give, give us your opinion, you guys. What do you think? I don't really have much of an opinion because <laughs> I've never played against it. I've never played it. Uh, it seems like a weak strategy. Yeah, I would say drop. I don't see a point of this even being on the list. Yeah, I mean, I think it's good in pods that don't have a ton of interaction. But... And I think you could get away with it in the early days of our format, you know, when CPDH was still figuring out what it was. Everyone's playing a ton of counter spells, but they're not playing, you know, black wasn't really a thing quite yet. You know, we didn't have the amount of removal that we have floating around now. Um, and I think in today's environment, I think this deck would suffer a lot. I and either. it would just get yeah. removed repeatedly. And you're you're in for a hurting if that happens. You're just gonna do sit it at the table and do nothing. So I'm okay with dropping it. Yeah, and with all that talk of removal, that's a perfect segue to our next commander, Aaron is Street Urchin. Aaron is Street Urchin. It's actually one I'm very familiar with. Um, a specific person, uh, Ankylosaur, is a person that really led the fight with this partner pairing or background pairing in the day. Um, they had their first big top four performance with it back in RIW, the original IRW from two years ago now. And it is just a hard control deck, just incredibly hard control, no combos, just initiative, monarch, you name it. We are just slaughtering everything. 
is I think this deck sits at a very specific tier. When you sit down and you see this deck at the table, you know what it's going to do. There's no if, ands, or buts. It's just like the ones we had, like Scholar of the Ages, Dark Oketis, right? You know this deck will be doing this thing. Its point is to curve out the, its commander pairing and stop you from playing the game. There's no questions about it. That is what this deck is doing. It's hard control. It is trying to grind you into the dust. And it's gruel. Out of all color schemes, it's gruel, right? So the fact that this is a just a straight control deck in these colors is insane to me. But where I'd like to put it, you guys, let me know what your thoughts are. I think it belongs in B tier. Similar to what you said earlier, Rohan, time frame is key. This deck will fight you for the initiative. If you try to take it from it, it will make it a point to not. But what ends up happening is that it opens up the door for the other two players and vice versa. It can only hold up the wall for so long and go from there. Where are you guys? Yeah, thoughts? I, I agree with that. Um, I've seen, I feel like I've seen the full gamut of, of this deck. I've played against it a lot. Um, and one of our, our locals in the New York scene plays this pretty regularly um, out in Brooklyn. It, it either just stops everything, just like shuts down the whole table and does its thing and slowly just hits the table, you know, with its beaters and grinds it out and just like wins through combat. Or it does the really fast combo decks a huge favor. <laughs> and, I, you know, you see yeah, yeah. one one of the pieces, either the enchantment or the commander gets bounced, then it, their whole day is shut down. They can't do anything about that. They have a few green protection spells to prevent that from happening, but those don't work on the enchantment. <laughs> so you bounce the enchantment or destroy the enchantment, and the deck just stops functioning. All these really, really high tier combo decks, they don't really need to commit that that much to the board. They really just they don't. You know, maybe, maybe three pieces, and and of those pieces, you know, one of them is a commander or two, and the rest are like have an insane amount of redundancy in the deck. So like, if it dies, whatever. Find another one. You probably find another one in a turn, maybe two. And you replay it, and and it's back. And now you know Aaron, this is a problem. I would probably personally put this deck in C tier. I mean, I think it's quite good, and it has a lot of legs. It's really good against certain tables and very particular meta. I think in a particular meta, it absolutely just crushes the meta. You know, in a meta that doesn't have a lot of these combo decks, these fast combo decks, it's an A tier or an S tier in that in that situation. Ooh. I, I, I got to argue with you really hard <laughs> in, in that regards, dude. Uh, so I got to interrupt you. you. Do not agree even remotely with that. So in those metas, I think it's even worse because really? if it's trying to push through damage, those are the decks that have the most things that are attempting to put on the table. Hmm. And if I keep trying to put things out, I'm going to clog the board and you can only take away so much of what I have. The decks that are your best matchups are the Malcolm Kettis and Laylors and Gretchen's. The problem is you can't keep pace with those decks, in my opinion. Yeah. They're just so like, oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Every turn, they're pushing win attempts, and you're like trying to keep pace with them. You eventually do, and once you do, you overwhelm them with because they're not hitting you to take your initiative, mm -hmm. right? What, what is the Gretchen deck doing? My zero four, my one two, my one one, right? They're not trying to take it away from you. Yeah, Gretchen is not swinging. Lay Lord's not yeah. swinging. Abdel's probably swinging, but. Well, that's if Abdel resolves, right? Like, Abdel's not going to do it, swing at you either. It's just going to wait, just like Rohan was saying. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Here it all is, right? In the bigger scheme of things where you have all of this clogged board states, it's worse because now it's being forced to go, I need to kill 15 things instead of killing two to three to four. I do see where you're coming from though, because in play experience, I have exactly experienced what you're saying, where it's just like, if I see this deck, you have no chance of beating me, right? Like a Dargo Kedis deck, this deck loves to see it. Oh yeah. Technically. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to say technically because with words, with, the original builder of this list, their exact statement was, if Dargo Kedis wants to beat me turns one through four, I will just lose the game. I will not yeah. stop it. Because if I make my deck to stop theirs, my deck will not be as good 
and resilient against the other decks of the format. Yeah. Sure. Totally fair, right? Yep. That's like the most fairest statement on the planet mm -hmm. because you're like, yeah, you're not going to play like bad cards like Lightning Axe to stop a Dargo, yep. right? You don't want to reduce your card quality to mm -hmm. beat your bad matches, which are going to be bad matches regardless. Jumping all the way back, you you guys let me know. We have a C and a B. What do you guys think? I, I personally think it's going to be C because even – even with Rohan saying that it does better in a mid-range matchup, it, it's like what you said, it still struggles in a combo meta. It still needs to put out enough stuff on board. It still has to commit enough dudes and artifacts to the board to launch a match. I don't even think that's the problem. I think the problem is that the combo, the good combo decks can just sandbag and not commit anything to the board, and they have enough draw spells. Maybe Gretchen is an exception, because actually Gretchen lists mostly don't play a lot of draw spells. They need Gretchen on board to do that. What do you think, Isling? What's your thoughts? We have two Cs. I'm getting outnumbered here. Help me out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, this has the same problem as Rilsa. It's really no. cool. It does a cool thing. It's just uh, slow. I got, got outnumbered. Um, and then, right. unfortunately, at some point, uh, it still has trouble closing out the game unless there's other decks helping it out. Yeah. Fair. Quick caveat. Um, I have a little experience. Um, I have seen a combo version of this list exist. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with the original creator of the deck to create a combo variant. I personally have not tested it. Uh, I do know there's a different person in the meta that tested it. Um, they're currently busy now with uh, school and everything getting back into works. They are a teacher, so they're not currently with us at the moment. It has promise, but it's playing Persist Combo. It's okay. playing... Uh, Ivy Lane Denison, Devoted Druid, all that kind of jazz. But mm. I cannot confirm nor deny. It's only seen a few games. So looks like I was outnumbered here. I would like it to be in B. I still think the deck's very strong. But we are at C. But with that said, Islane, I would like you to take us away with Floodgate. What are your thoughts on Floodgates? Uh. <laughs> I remember the first time I played against it, I was, what is this garbage? What am I playing? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh. These are not good words to start, uh, but yes. Uh, you know, hey, I, I pr was proven a believer in some degree because it did show me what it can do. It's weird. <laughs> like, it, it's just it's just weird. It's, it's like a <laughs> fucking flying, defending board wipe. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't, yeah, that's exactly what it is. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like decks that are built around commanders that just don't do anything. Like, yes, the wipe actually that, does become fair. relevant, but like, it doesn't feel like it's getting you anywhere to winning a game. But it's in blue, and there's plenty of combos. So, I mean, sure. But I only have experience playing against Bobby's version, and him beating me with it, and me being like, "This deck shouldn't even fucking exist." So, uh, uh, Bobby is an extremely talented player. <laughs> I think. He could be playing a two by four and still win. <laughs> it's uh, kind of hard to judge it in that way because it just has one of the, you know, one of probably the most talented players in the format <laughs> behind it, and I've never seen anyone else play it. <laughs> so. True story. Bobby, be fine, fine. Beating you with Floodgate is a PDH canon event, so it's going to happen mm. to you. Yeah, I'm saying G tier, like uh, not <laughs> okay. even. All right, so we have we have we have a D tier off the rip. Uh, what do you guys? What are you guys' thoughts? I'll be last with this one because I've been the believer in this deck for a long time. Yeah, so I was going to say if Bobby hear. plays it, it's an A. If anyone else plays a. it, unfortunately, it's probably going to be in like D. Okay, <laughs> it, it's the Bobby magic. I've only played against it a few times, so I'm going to say it's. I probably put it along, put it in D alongside Pure Save Marrow as like it has legs. <laughs> But it's one, it's wildly untested. It, has, it seems like it has a lot of variants. Like sometimes it does the thing and sometimes it just doesn't do the thing. Mm. And it just doesn't seem as consistent. It's a combo deck, right? And like, I just don't see it have the same consistency as like the oh. other mono blue combo oh. deck that has an insane amount of consistency. Um, all right, let me, let me see if I can win this one. Um, so something we haven't done yet, and I'm actually going to uh, bring it in now. Uh, I'm going to do a comparison with the decks that we already have in the D tier. 
Um, if Rocco decides to play against Floodgate, Floodgate will shit on Rocco. If Rocco or if Floodgate decides to play against Tantiova, that's that's not even a game of magic, right? Floodgate will just destroy Tantiova, right? You just keep bouncing the Tantiova. None of their combo outlets will exist, right? You'll just keep obliterating them off the planet. Pure Sight Marrow, maybe because it's the creature that is your combo outlet that you just suit up to kill the Floodgate, but then you're using the Floodgate for your opponents. It's a weird dynamic. Never seen it. No idea. Malcolm Arden? That's a weird one. I also, two Azorius decks, I don't know how either one of those are going to pan out, right? But now let's move to the C tier. Um, it will outright beat Gut. Gut can't beat that deck. It will outright beat Viscopa. Viscopa can't beat that deck. It will outright beat Aranus. Right? What Aranus is going to kill it to kill itself? That's like absurd, right? And then Rosa. Rosa has the best out against it. See, but now when we get to B tier, that's where it's interesting, right? Scholar should just destroy it. Gargo Kedis could blitz it. Malcolm Rog, too fast, blitzes it. Is it Gilmage? Hey, I'm blue and I'm oh, the only the, creature. Oh, Gilmage absolutely crushes that. <laughs> yeah, thing. like I'm just absolutely blue. Wrecks it. Yeah, yeah. I, like you're not messing with me. Disciple Deceit, I'm also blue. Also, it doesn't care. Yeah. Just, I'm going to destroy you. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, I guess it could stop TPI because they're artifact creatures. And same with Loyal Subordinate. But it, 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 the, the higher we're getting up the tiers, the weaker it's becoming. So I know you guys are like hard in D, but since I've kind of showed you that it could like slaughter a few of the decks in these categories, I'd like to say T, the C. I get that it's a Peregrine Drake combo deck. Like that's what it is, right? It's a Ghosty Flicker deck. So it does have a resiliency. It does have the extreme problem finding the drake right you have to find the drake you now granted you have high tide cloud of fairies the redundancy but easier said than done right so will you guys throw c at me or are you guys gonna stay d i don't know i th even think against the gut matchup i know you're saying like gut can never win it but i think at that table gut would just pick that pick that deck to kill first it would have to it, it has to and then and then neither of them win yep i mean so. just based off of like <laughs> purely subjective I just don't like it and I would play any of the other decks in C I'm still putting it in D damn alright I have lost my argument we are in D alright let me get the top of D alright I got a little something you got the tip uh, of D alright so <laughs> I do know a few of you guys aren't very familiar with this list so let me just take this one away this one is Phyrexian Sensor I am one of the few believers in this list. I like stacks. This is stacks in the zone. I have a lot of faith in this deck. Now, the problem I have with this deck is that you cannot play it online. If you play it online, it's it's almost cheating. And the reason I say that is because the board state gets so cluttered and you have all these different creatures that have weird keywords. You have a creature that says pro red. Then you have one that says pro black. Then you have one that says pay one pro red any creature then you have one that's a stainer bear then you have one that has an etb trigger then you have one that has a tutor so on and so forth the board state gets to such a degree to where you can't finish a game because no one knows what the hell you're doing and no one knows what any of your cards do because most of your cards are from like mercadian masks apocalypse and they're just old and yeah. this is what makes it even worse. A lot of the cards in this deck are so old, they're Texas change. A lot of the cards are Phyrexians. And on the cards themselves, they don't even say Phyrexian. They say Choleric or they say something else. Who, who knows what they say at this point, but they're not what they say they are. So you just keep going into ask people ask, you get judge calls that is the biggest problem that this deck has, not including the fact that people forget one spell per turn, you're sitting here telling people, hey, you already did that. Hey, you already did that. Hey, you already did that. And you go to time. With that said, I do think a specific pilot can make this deck great. 
It is insane. And we keep getting more changelings. We just got a new changeling to develop a soft lock against red and black decks with the rebel package in sensor. So I think the deck has legs. I refuse to drop this deck. I'm going to say D for the moment only because it's not seeing play and it's so difficult with time from everything that I said thus far. Where are you guys' thoughts? Funny enough, I was going to say put it in C. I think it has a much better matchup against combo decks. And as long as you're able to keep your stuff on the board and not get bounced, just so, because that's what always happens when you're playing stacks, where you have, where you stack, where you <laughs> soft lock the board, and then someone goes, okay, echoing truth, temporarily bounce it, I win because I'm not under a rule law effect. As long as you're able to keep that soft lock on there, I think you can manage a win within time. We just got an upgrade for, for the list. Uh, we actually got a lot of upgrades from Bloomboro, mm. which is we got the new rabbit that has pay four, pump the team. Mm. So it's a big mana deck. The whole point is like a lot of rocks, a lot of creatures that tap. I really want this deck to go in D. Uh, mm. I hope you guys don't want to drop it, but his name, what are your, what are your thoughts? I know you know stacks. I don't, very well. I don't think it should be dropped because it's the only, it's the closest thing to like having yeah. a functional stack stick in the format that you can have. I think that there still needs to be some support pieces. I really wish that something like that uh, bobble that they printed in Modern Horizons 3 would have been no oh, common. Because <laughs> it's uh, just yeah, like... Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like gonna break the fucking format, That's but true. it would be great as a common, and it would be great for that list yeah. as like another piece for stacks to just have that little extra silver bullet of like, yeah. you can't foil me with your foil because, haha, I foil your foil with this thingy. So more pieces like that that are kind of powered down stacks pieces that are just like, you know, just this in minor inconvenience that they could print in common would be fantastic. I don't um, disagree. And at some point, that may be the thing that maybe does slow all the combo decks down just enough that where your beats actually keep them from being able to do anything. I, I agree with this line there. Or alternatively, um, a commander that's similar that has like a rule of law effect that's just in one more color. It's a white and anything else i think would help, tremendous, there, would help tremendously well with that said uh can we all agree d yeah i would yep. yeah i'm okay d. with it so let's move on to the next one is lane let me hit you with this one this is sir conrad i know you've played against this quite a bit what are your thoughts uh in multiple formats dude um it's a great Drain effect uh, on a decent sized body. I mean, it costs a little bit to get it out, but when you're in a mono color, that's usually pretty easy to do. And Black Scott rituals and etc. So um, it can form little, you know, graveyard recursion loops and or um, you know just activate to mill, and people start taking damage because of his uh, various triggered abilities. So it seems strong as far as being able to consistently just drain the table. I don't know if it's better or worse than Larry. In that regard, I think Larry might be a little bit faster. I, I hard to say. Like I don't know if I've seen enough direct comparison to make that judgment. But it's kind of on the same sort of game plan, though. It's, it's you know try to drain the table, tries to do it as fast as it can. Um, I've seen the variants where they play rats and other things, which fine, I guess. I don't I don't know. That's the one I've played against. I think the most was mm -hmm. uh, um, the rat one, the, the rat version. But I know I've played against other versions as well. But yeah, it's strong. I don't know. I don't know that I can see putting it any higher than B. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's even the right place for it. It's somewhere between B and C. I think is fair. What are your thoughts, Kunks? I know you you play against uh, Aaron quite a bit, and you talk to Clay quite yeah, a bit about, about Aaron's list, very, so. very strong B. Very strong B. Yeah, okay. even with Clay, when when they go hit was when it gets to a long grindy game. And Tortex is and Tortured Existence has already resolved, and they already have that loop of like, yeah, I can just pay one mana to ping everyone for two, and there's nothing anyone can do about it. Mm -hmm. You just go to like, okay, I guess you can just pay as much as you want, loop your stuff in and out the grave, and then we'll eventually die. And then, fortunately enough, Sir Conrad is, has a big enough body where it, it could still swing in for damage. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I put it in B. I think it's very strong. Um, I think if you don't, the, the thing about the deck that I think makes it really good is that 
it doesn't put up a huge board presence or board state in the first few rounds of the game while still remaining pretty interactive because it has a ton of kill spells. And people just don't pick on it. No one touches the Conrad player until, I don't know, it's like turn... <laughs> until it's too late. Five, six, and then yeah. Conrad hits the board, and then everything hits the board. <laughs> I've seen this deck just put out a ton of stuff in like one, one or two turns, and now all of a sudden it has an insane board that just came out of nowhere, and it's really oppressive and hard to deal with. Um, if you let the deck get there, you are probably screwed. Um and and you have to work together to fight to fight against it. It's just a really scary deck, and uh, I think for that reason, it should be respected. So let let me hit you with a play pattern that you kind of like alluded to. With that, um, this is a personal experience of mine. I'm not going to say the players or anything like that. I just want to get the point out there. I was playing a game. It went to turn five. They had one mana rock, which specifically was a Bonders ornament. They go tap bonders, bubbling muck. And I was like, okay, so you have five mana, you have ten mana. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> uh, they were like, uh everybody sack creature. We we're like, sure. They're like, give it undying. We we're like, sure, everyone sack creature. Yep. Uh how big is your creature? It's a what, a three three? They're like, yeah. They're like, show you a pestilence. I'm like, holy I'm like, holy crap. Like this they just Made a sack two creatures, played a pestilence, still had mana up. No one creature left in play. No one could get rid of it. And they just gained control the entire game with one turn cycle, exactly yep. like you're describing. Which yep. I know doesn't sound very exciting, but a pestilence with an active creature that's only a three three has just won you the game, right? Because you're gonna do exactly what you said, Rohan. You're gonna go, uh, show you my Sir Conrad. You can't swing at me. I still have an active pestilence at any point that I could just now ignore. You have to deal with me and anyone decides to play any creatures. Well, you can't because I'll just get rid of them and not play a Sir Conrad. So it just, the deck is very strong in my opinion. Um, and I do agree with you guys. I do think the deck is a uh, solid B tier. Well, with this one, Kunks, Hit us with your opinion on Teshar. I know you have some thoughts on the stack. Yeah, if you asked me about a year ago, I would have said D, probably C. But with Bray making a bunch of improvements to the deck, and me just having like a bad matchup whenever I'm playing against him because I'm always like on gut, or Malcolm Kettis, I'd say also probably strong B or A. Ooh, wow. Hey, yeah, holy he, he, hell. Yeah, he used okay. to be a combo, it, damn. He, yeah, it used to be wow. a combo deck that would literally do nothing until it wins, but now it can actually fight in in games. Whew. Uh, Rohan, what are your thoughts? You said WoW first, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I've, I've played a decent number of games against Teshar, um, both against Bray, uh, also against uh, uh, MTG Chris, um, and then also locally here, the New York scene, there's a... Uh, there's, one, actually two Teshar player. One player who plays Teshar a lot and one who kind of sides it. It only, it does, it, for me, from what I've seen so far, it's, it kind of does the Rilsa thing. Like, it has inevitability. If you let it get to that, it will win. Um, and it, once it gets to that point, it becomes really hard to interact with and it just wins. But like, it's usually like right around the 90 minute mark or like right just before it's like just before we go to time or the game goes to time or it just dies. So I haven't seen the, a new build of it yet. You know, I haven't seen like a faster build or, or whatever. Um, and maybe that's significantly better. I, it's I not faster, but okay, yes. <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. Um, I, I haven't played against it, so I, I can't say, but from what I've played against so far, I would say it is C at best, if not D. But I, I do think it's got white has some new toys and new interaction and in and in like since MH three, um, and maybe even before that, like this year specifically. So I'd be willing to give it a C. Okay, what are your thoughts, this lane? Yeah, I put it in C. I haven't played against it in Popper, and I have not played it in Popper. Um, I don't know that it's anywhere near as reliable as the CDH version, so I, I would assume not. 
And I don't even know if it plays along the same axis. So I'm kind of out of the loop with this one. But I know just based on its strengths <clears throat> in other formats, it's likely to eventually perform. It just needs the right pieces to be printed. I'd say C is fine because it has potential. Um, yeah, I'm getting my butt kicked today, you guys. Uh, I, I was going to go with B. Um, I, I was with you on that one. <laughs> Uh, I, I, yeah, you said B, but kind of lean into C, so sure. Uh, but you know, I'm, uh, I wanted to go to B, uh, even closer to A. Um, I think this deck actually just outright beats certain decks in the format outright cold because it could loop cards like Kami of the False Hope, right? Just outright cold turkeys that deck. Um, it also has other creatures which cannot re- remember the name of some of them. Yeah, I forgot the name they, of the one mana artifact that also says uh, target sources can't do damage this turn. Uh, it's a three mana artifact creature. I just remember it's an artifact creature that says yeah. that. Yeah, it's just, it sacrifices itself to prevent everything from a source, but yeah, that's another one as well. But it the deck is very resilient. Um, I think the deck has our last ranking of it was D. Uh, it was actually just they put on the list because Puzzle thought the deck was cool. <laughs> deck. It's been a crazy eight months since then. Yes, I do believe the deck has grown a lot due to Braze specifically, and I've been very much impressed with it. It's very good at punking the decks that think it does nothing. I vote a solid B, but... You guys, uh, I will no, go I with what you too. guys said. The older builds, I'd say, were the builds that I played, you know, over the past year are probably a C, but I could I could very well see it being a potentially a B if there's a new build that is able to find its pieces faster or at well, least see, it stop doesn't, or, interact, or interact better to stop other people faster. Well, see, that's, that's his problem. That's why I'm okay with putting it in C, because... There are some games where you're like, yeah, okay, I'm dead. And then you just move on. It's like, that's it. You're just like, yeah, you got me. And you just, there's nothing you could have done about it. You're just like, yep. It's not there yet. It's getting more, re- it gets redundancy from every single set that's printed. So I do think uh, the longer the deck exists in the format, the better it does become. So it was D, now it becomes a C. Still makes me feel good. So. We all agree C tier. Yep. Cool. But with this one, uh, I'm going to pick on you a little bit, Kunks again, Kutzel, because I know you've spoken with Kutzel players quite a bit recently. <laughs> what, are your, what are your thoughts? Uh, give us your positive thoughts on Kutzel. Um, it draws a bunch of cards. It's like, a t- it's like the Timna of our format, because when you do combat damage to a player with your modified creatures... You draw a card, you don't lose life, which is great on that point. So it does that very well, right? Uh, we had a Kutzel hit, go into top four recently in Sanctuary. They won two games in a row. That's about it for anything positive for the deck, because unfortunately, like, the cards you're drawing are to replace the creatures you're, that are, will get removed or the creatures that just get blocked because you, you, you need the modified creatures. So you're just having a whole bunch of weird one ones that power themselves up slowly. Or just have like another weird buff creature to help something out or equipments. So you're not really drawing into good, meaningful cards. You're just drawing into the same thing you had already. Well, no, you said something really interesting. Sorry to interrupt you there, but you're yeah. you're just drawing the same cards that you already have. Ironically, in a combo deck, that's awesome. Well, a deck that has yeah. combos. I don't want to say a combo deck, right? But like in a Malcolm deck, that's like, oh, great. This is a great thing. Yeah, it's like, oh, cool. I drew a whole bunch of penguins and tank changes. That's exactly what I need. But, but here this, you're, you're just drawing one one more creatures. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It it's the card quality is just different because you're a combat deck. You need to do a combat to win because you don't really have a combo. The other weird thing, because Cutsels shuts off uh, anyone from casting spells during your turn, you inadvertently protect the player next to you, to your left. Interesting. Where are you guys' yeah. thoughts on that? What do, you, what do you guys think? How do you feel about what Kunks is saying? I mean, I play Cutsel. I think it's pretty good. Um, 
It, really? I think okay. it kind of depends on how you build it. Um, there are a lot of options out there to make your creatures modified that don't just revolve around like maybe 1-1 one, one counters. There are ways to give evasion. Um, there's also, uh, you know, just getting the 1-1 one, one counters on stuff can sometimes be good because you'll have creatures that say like all your 1-1 one, one counter creatures have trample or, you know, whatever. So in some cases, it's enough to go wide. Um, if you're building a bunch of cheap creatures, like you said, little 1-1s one, that kind of grow over time, those cards are not going to, you know, beat the table down very fast, but in an aggro style list, that could be maybe fast enough to do some damage. I don't know. I found that my, in my cutsel list, like the arm grew and it grew fast and it got big. So it's going wide and tall at the same time. And if you can get a nice balance of that, drawing more of that isn't bad because you're just like, okay, now I bolster here. Now I adapt here. Now I mentor here. Now I do this and that and everything's just getting big. Now granted, yes, there are removal spells, but Board wipes aren't killing a whole thing like that unless it's a pestilence. And if it's not a pestilence, yeah. then what? Now everybody's just getting beat. Now, does that win you the game faster than combo decks? No. So, like, is it going to be anything more than, like, a C? Probably not. But I still think it has potential to be. Yeah, and that's better. exactly where I was going to probably place it. It's a very solid C tier. Other than, like, uh, like a Malcolm, you know, list that, that has an Ophidian Eye out on a ping or something. It's, it draws more cards than any other deck. The, the deck draws an astounding amount of cards, undisturbed, in, in like a way that nobody really does anything about it. Also, you know, I don't think people are so scared of it either. Once again, you can't even play instance on its turn. So, like, you're not interacting with it on its turn. You'd have to commit to interaction on someone else's turn to stop that. And it's like, it's also hitting everybody equally. So, it's not just like a threat to, to you if you're like a playing combo deck or playing whatever, it's not a direct threat to you, so you kind of want to just chill on it. So it, we kind of just let it draw cards. It's unfortunate that there's this no combos in Slesnia that are just like two cards. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, if there if there was, there was something like that, this in, in exactly media, probably jumps up to like A. Sanity. Yeah. yeah or higher. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. And the other problem, you know, the other thing that happens with the deck is that it's encouraged to play sorcery speed interaction so that it doesn't get interacted with, you know, back on it. So it doesn't get counterspelled, <laughs> yeah. which, which I see a lot. You know, it plays, like, lignifies and stuff like that. As we kind of know by now, it doesn't really, like, yeah, it, it stops It stops some decks, but it stops the decks that you're really not that scared of. Yeah, <laughs> and the decks that yeah. are really scary, it doesn't really stop. But, like, cards like that, like pacifism-type things, like enchantments or... Or even if it's removal, it's removal at sorcery speed or like something like um, Journey to Nowhere, like that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Which once again, it's it's fine. So yeah. then, what do you? So starting with you, Islane, let's work our way down. So Islane, Kungs, and Rohan, what what are you guys' thoughts on where are you guys going to put on the tier list? Ah, uh, C, yeah. C, Kungs. C, C. I agree. Yep. Well, damn. All right. Not even going to say where I was going to go. It's no, you did. There we go. No, it sounded like it was a D. It's a C. All right. <laughs> Moving to next, uh, since, you know, uh, I'm the most familiar one with this deck. I'm going to take this one away. Well, I mean me. <laughs> I mean Islay. Uh This one is a cloak. I, I can't pronunciate it. It's a no, you, Islay. <laughs> Oh, you silly goose. Stop. Uh, uh, it's uh, Sivris, a Hermit. Um, deck that's near and dear to my heart, but doesn't really place very well on this list, I don't think. Um, nope. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't start with that one. It places near and dear to my heart, too, and it does place high to me, so we, we may have some Well, words. I mean, you know, where I want to put it is probably, like, B, because it's just... it's not performed as far as like in for me personally as far as like taking anything down but uh it also has its trouble closing out the game sometimes it, not as bad as other mid-range decks that i've seen that really struggle with with time because if you do draw into your gray merchant or some of the other cards that i specifically play that can just drain the table out in one turn at the end of a game to just finish it off uh can be the thing that you know sets it apart uh, plus, you know, there's just a lot of experimentation with other things, but really it's just, it's a value engine in the command zone that 
draws you cards, drains people of life, and uh, provides you further bodies to sacrifice and do other things. Uh, we get a couple more. Really, I mean, I think the, the renaissance of the deck was when, like, Work with Bats was printed and Not Year's Night Blade was downshifted, like, all around the same time. It really made a big change in the way the deck could be played with Grave Flickering and, you know, Tortured Existence Loops and things like that. And then we did get a combo that works out of MH3, but uh, I am yeah, it's not worth it. Game. Um, yeah. So, I, so I, I think I think it's a it's a nice grindy list that gives you some command uh, some uh, card advantage. Uh, also, in conjunction with other decks that are out there and a lot of popular strategies right now, like pingers and things, it kind of gets alley ooped into positions where it could potentially win. You usually have a board state. You almost always have a full hand of cards. It's fun as hell to play. It's just been rough in a tournament setting. So I, I don't, I can't, I don't feel like I can justifiably put it any higher than like B. And that's still just me kind of patting myself on the back for making a deck that kind of sort of works. So is that, is that your, is that your final answer though? Do you truly, believe I won't put it any, I can't answer? put it any higher than B. Um, and if I put it in B, it probably, it's probably lower end, like, you know, where Sir Conrad's at. Okay. So, so let me let me hit you because me and you are very familiar with uh, this deck. Uh, Conks has been there with me when I have compared this list specifically to Sir Conrad and Abdel Black, and I believe it's a in between of both of those decks because it's doing what Abdel Black is doing, but it's doing it worse because it can't make as many tokens because it can only make two a turn, but. It's doing what Sir Conrad is doing by damaging the table, but it can only do it maybe three a turn unless they give you the cards. So it's doing it worse, but it's doing it nonchalant, right? It's kind of like, oh yeah, give me the card, right? It's, it's very weird. It, it's, a, it's a very weird dynamic the deck brings to the table. It's a sub deck. It's like, yeah, it, the man, I have another. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a very interesting list. What I found recently through all of the testing. Now, here, here's the irony between me and you is like, I have not had good results with the list either, but I hand it to random people and then they top four. That's my problem that I'm having with this deck. So I can argue me and you suck, but then I hand it to random Joe that's never played the format ever, the first tournament he plays in, he plays that list, which is your list that I hand him out of my deck box in top fours in my local events. And I'm like, okay, I just suck. <laughs> like, uh, like what, how did this guy just top four, never played before, hand him my deck box, which Kunks has been there in person to experience this, and then he top fours. And random Joe's name... Bobby B. Fine. No. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> uh, that would be funny, but no, not Bobby. No, but shout out to you, but, Izzy. We love you. Yes, Izzy. Izzy is our uh, local player that uh, just randomly picked this deck up. Uh, follows everything that oh, you put out there, is saying about the list for the record. Yeah, um, I wanted to throw it out there. He also said that he hated green when he first oh, picked up the deck. He actually got uh, mad at me. I'm not a huge fan of green either, but, you know. Yeah, but services does work. Yep. But. Unless if you're Gator and then you only draw rampant lands off of uh, service triggers. I, I, yeah, see, that's the thing. I, that's what I get when I play the deck. But he plays the deck and it's like Grey Merchant, Tortured Existence, Flicker Spell. You're like, hell no. But then his draw for turn is like season to renewal and brings back Grey Merchant and Tortured Existence. You're like, why? Is, <laughs> why are you so good at this game? And so just because I am bad at it, I can't say that other people are not good. I would put the deck depressingly in D because in my opinion, the deck is good at stopping players from winning the game. If yeah. I play the deck... I've already done it where I am. I play the bad guy at the table and I go sack creature, flicker it, sack creature, flicker it, snuff that out, kill that sack creature, tortured it, bring it back, sack creature. And I just wrath the field every turn indefinitely. I've still lost those games or I've gone to time. I want to put it in D, but 
my caveat that Kunks has seen in person is that other players play the shit out of this deck. And honestly, they make it a B tier deck from my experience. So it's very hard for me to truly say it's a D tier deck because I've seen the average Joes play the deck in top four events. So I mean, it sounds like it's a solid C, you know, I would, and I would agree with that. I mean, my experience with this deck, I haven't played Gator playing, but I mean, I've played numerous games with this lane playing the list. Um, I've seen it win. I've also seen, I, I, I I feel though when when I when I play games with you as Lane, a lot of those games end up just going to time, and and you're never dead. You're always alive to the bitter end. But like, it's just a highly they tend to be highly interactive games, which is awesome, and they're really fun. But nobody wins. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard to find the pieces for you to win, which is kind of what Isling said, right? Merkwood Bats allow the deck to win the game. Nadir's Nightblade allow the deck to win, finally. But if you don't see those few pieces that you are getting downshifted or getting created for your deck, you still don't win. So, um, could we all agree... It could also be the same thing as, like, you oh. know, the issue with Pingers, where there weren't as many, you know, a couple of years ago, even. And now, Correct. all of a sudden, there's nothing enough, agree. you know. So, sure. for, you know... Two years, two three years from now, maybe there's like three more Murkrow back. Yeah, back. then it's totally like just kind of hard to crazy. cheat out Silver's activations. Like you need the Curian Ranger. But with that said, uh, can we all agree C tier? Yeah, yeah. Yep. This one's gonna be a quick one. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take it. Uh, Azure Odds Maker played it in a few events. Uh, can't win. Uh, plain and simple, from my experience, can't win the game. That's it. Maybe I suck. Somebody pick up Azeroth's Maker, prove me wrong. My vote is drop. That I'm is my that. statement. What do you guys think? Yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, back when I was brewing um, Amber Blue. And a uh, super fun deck. You know, it seems to draw a lot of cards. And it's kind of doing this, a similar thing where it has to, like, hit people. You're hitting people with, like, evasive things. You know, trying to accrue a lot of value. But... It just it once again it doesn't it doesn't win the game. Draw cards, you interact, you don't win the game. And you either just lose or go to time every time. It's the reason oh. that deck is not on this list. With that said, Azure Oddsmaker is a drop. Uh, with that said, let's move on to the next commander. Yep. And with that, we actually have a special double drop with Loyal Apprentice. Even though it's won a tournament with the original with the first common cause, we haven't seen it show up and it. I don't really think it proves like doesn't doesn't have the performance for it. It's in mono red. Does not even though we've had like a whole bunch of uh, well, mono, possibility effects. Mono, mono red is pretty good as a yeah. We scheme. we have a bunch of so. we just got like a bunch of thorough possibility effects because they keep reprinting them <laughs> in all these sets. We've gotten like what like four like at least one in every standard set for this entire year. It, actually, quite a bit, like highway robbery and all those. Yeah, I mean, but just like having a, one extra thought to every combat, it's like this deck is TPI, slow, but slow, though, right? Yeah, but it, but it's not right. Like TPI, you blink and you make something. This is I go to combat make one. So this is loyal apprentice is like young pyromancer, and then if you took both of them and combine them together, you get supercharged golden sonic called third path iconoclast <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right like is that is that what they become mm -hmm. so it, it's really hard for me to see a world where you could legitimately say i'm taking this when tpi exists and or young pyromancer exists it just rewards you for playing the game this rewards you for going to combat. I guess it, like they're flyers, right? They're they're not bad creatures, and they're artifacts too, right? But doesn't it fall into the same category of what I said earlier with TPI? I play electricery to deal with your mana dorks. Oh, I just accidentally wrathed your entire field. I mean, it yeah, is so. part of the same cycle as Larry, so it is that whole same sort of thing uh, larry's just better because it just symmetrically hits the whole board for three and this thing is like well i can hit one person for three 
I mean, this and card the next turn, be... I can hit one person for three and another person for two. <laughs> <laughs> that was very unexciting. Yeah. Wow, cool. Much like the first deck. time I sat across with Zek, I was like, why are you playing this? And then uh... I proceeded to point out everything that this guy was going to do wrong <laughs> before he did it. I'm like, bro, you're doing this, and that's a mistake. Oh, no, 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 it's fine. Bro, you're doing this, it's a mistake. No, 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 it's fine. I know what I'm doing. Then, like, third time, he was like, bro, I've been playing blah, blah, blah. I know what I'm talking about. Okay. So it sounds like you're putting this in S tier. <laughs> uh, this is... I, Which... I would solidly drop this off of list completely. Oof. Okay, so we have a solid drop. Uh, Clunks, you're next. What is your yeah, vote? Oh, drop. Oh, two drops. Uh, Rahul, yeah, let's get it out of here. We have TPI already. We don't need TPI at home. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have our next drop. Kunks came in hard with the drop, and it looks like drops have won. Actually, Franklin, again, you just you came in hard with that one. Let's see if you could be a little nicer to the next one. What it's are your really hard to deck? not be nice to Wilson Far Traveler. The deck just performs well. The deck has answers to practically everything in the format. The only issue I have with this deck is that I need a post-it note. Just for uh, just for everyone watching and listening, uh, Wilson Far Traveler has uh, all the aura tutors in it in uh, Beast Heart Guide, uh, Shrine Stewart, and I forgot the third one. So with the answer. Yeah, 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 and Heliod's Pilgrim. So you can tutor for practically any... You tutor for all the auras that you need to either build up Wilson or you have your auras like uh, Temporal Isolation. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of those pacifism effects. What's even messed up is all the ones that have instant speed pacifism effects that you could just slap onto one of your opponent's creatures, stop them from pinging. Yep. So I would strongly put this in probably A or... A or really high B. Oof. It's high praise. Uh, what are your thoughts, this lane? What do you what do you got to say about this deck? I have zero things to say about this deck. I have not played it. I have not played against it. Like okay. literally zero times. I, I know it was in the tournament recently. Uh, I've heard good yep. things. I do yeah. not know what the deck is trying to do, so I could not tell you. Yeah, okay. it's the top four I was it IRW? Yes, R A W. And and top four in at uh Sanctuary and Rich to Rags. Many, yeah. Yeah. Where do you thoughts and on it, Rohan? Numerous cool. others. Um, I think this, is, this deck is sauce. I think it's the best Celestia deck by far. Um, I've seen it. I've played against it a <laughs> lot. I've seen it do a lot. I've even I've seen it perform. There's only a few types of pod compositions where I think it really struggles, um, and those come up. They're almost edge cases for the most part. It's able to do its thing. Um, it flies under the radar, uh, you know, especially at a table with like the Gretchens and Malcolms and you know, CPIs or whatever. And it's able to build up like a pretty significant board state surprise shockingly quickly and start tutoring for it's extremely busted stuff. Shockingly quickly. I mean, like I've seen it find um, like a massive ne nexus or something and just like make something extremely fucking large and flying and indestructible by like turn five. And it's, is pumping out like 16 damage. Ancestral Mask, like, right? Ancestral Master, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, that's, what it's just, that's a different, <laughs> the wrong format. <laughs> um, Ancestral Mask or all that glitters, you know, these like huge Yeah, pumps, these huge pumps, pump yeah. Spells. It also does not care about burn decks because it gains a ton of life too through yeah. life gain. Orders. Armadillo Cloak, yeah. Armadillo Cloak, yeah. Yes, um, Spirit Link, you know, all those types of cards. Like what What makes this better than Seder Enchanter? Oh, oh I guys, exactly. could I, so yeah. do you know the keywords? Do you know the text box of Wilson? I know. Well, I know Wilson's got a bunch of shit on him. Yeah, yeah. It can't be cards, which is super important. Has War Two, Trample, and it also has an extra keyword that's really messed up that that Malcolm hates. It has okay. the deck is weakest to disenchantments. Which don't <laughs> I have a card that no deck plays in this format. <laughs> Nobody plays disenchantments, so it just goes or unmolested basically um, until you get you know get a board wipe before the deck can start building up its its like um, big buff enchantments. And if you can do that, great. Then you can really set the deck behind. But if you can't, it's 
going to kill a couple people for sure. Um, it does have to hope that it doesn't die to the like last person in its like when it's trying to one shot each person one at a time. So that is the weakness of the deck. It has a really tough time hitting all three players at once. It, it basically can't. I've I've seen it do it maybe once, but for the most part, it just can't. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna agree with Franklin. I. Th- I think this might be an A tier deck. It might be the only Ooh, like shit. maybe the only like combat it can, like, the highest combat highest tier combat deck that exists, possibly. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna fight you guys for this one. Sure. I can't I can't say it's uh it's A tier. So Hive has done an amazing job with this deck. Now here's my argument. Name me one other player that plays a deck. That's true. Zero. And the reason it's relevant is because Hive is the one that continues to bash their head up against the wall. Now, they top consistently. Will they eventually win an event? My answer is yes. Yeah. But why is no one else picking up this list is very strange to me, especially in Because it like, doesn't have the post-it note. Well, I mean, this deck is a deck that is better in a better player's hand. And Hive is a good player. And which Hive has demonstrated that with playing other decks and, and done well with those decks as well, even through just casual games, right? So is it the deck or the player? We don't know, but I do believe that the deck is is good. I believe it is one, if, if not the strongest mid-range deck we have in the format because of the tutor targets. Yep. But to play this deck, you need to know how to mulligan. You need to know what to tutor for. You need to know... A, you need to know B, you need to know C, you need to know yeah, and, D. And you so, need to know how to sequence properly, because if you flip the sequences, exactly. then you're going to totally mess up, like, what's being tapped at the end of the turn, like, all yep, that, and all your sure, like, exactly. everything is, like, properly set up, uh, or you, you can't, the deck does nothing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right? Like, I've played Test of the Deck, in fact, Kongs have seen me play this deck in person very many times, where I can mold the form win the game. But I'm all to four because I'm all to like Heliot's Pilgrim, put it into play, and I'm just like, yeah, move to end step. I already tutored for one thing I needed, move to end step, trigger target. People are like, oh, yeah, I tutor the next card I need. I untap and I'm like, upkeep, cloud shift, target that. They're like, uh oh. I'm like, yep. haha, I just tutored for three cards I needed. Gross. But that's a very specific play pattern that you need to know every single card in your deck. You need to know certain things. You need to know why you're targeting that over a spirited companion, over all these draw creatures. I would like to put the deck in B. Uh, Because if you're new to the list, you will struggle to end the game. I don't believe you will be able to stop players from winning uh, because you don't know what to get. You're going to get the wrong cards. This deck is one of the few decks on our list that I personally believe you need to know, you have to know what you're doing. That you can't just go, oh yeah, I'm going to tutor. You will go to time, right? Because you're going to sit there looking at your deck for five minutes. Someone's going to call slow play on you and you're yep. screwed. Just like you were saying, Kunks, uh, I need my post-it note, right? Yeah. Like you need to know what they all are, but there's like 20 in the deck. Good luck. Figure it out. You have to know it or you have no results. And even with that, it's hard if you pick the wrong player, you lose similar to gut. So, and it does struggle against some of our decks in the B class. So, I think it's a perfect B tier deck. Yeah, that's fair. I can I yeah. can understand that argument. I, I think we had for- we said something really similar about Disciple and Deceit. It's a deck exactly. where you have to know literally every card in the deck. You have to know exactly, you know, what you're looking for and when, and you need to know every other deck at the table and what they're trying to do because you have to tutor for these things to interact with them. But, you know, it's, it's just like a lot of layers yeah. and each of these decks, l- literally only one player has really shown all what these decks could do. So I can, I hear you there. I'm, I'm okay with putting it in B just so, because, of, because of that. We all vote B. Good to go. Uh, is Lane. Actually, I think this one's the one for you, Alexios, Mr. You play against Slicer. What What do you think about this one? What's your thoughts? So I've discussed with you and other people like the whole concept of like a rock paper scissors like balancing to the format and just any format in general. And I think that 
aggro needs some work to try and combat some of the stuff that's happening in the format, and I think cards like this might be pointing in that right direction to some extent. But this is like Slicer. Slicer is a Transformers card, of all things, that was one of those Universe Beyond pack-ins with, like, collector's boosters around whatever time it released. Random ass way to get them, I suppose, but uh, it got a little bit of notoriety because it won a CDH tournament and then kind of just fell off the map because after people knew what it did, it kind of lost its uh, glory or whatever, its surprise factor. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, basically a card that gets handed around the table and people do things with it. This is the same principle, it's just a lower rarity, a little slightly smaller of a body, I think a slightly smaller mana cost as well, and um, yeah, you play it out, you give it to other people, they swing or swing it, you get it back, you swing it, you attach it to it, you get the benefits off of most of the stuff that's attached, and or it incentivizes people to attack more, whatever the case is, but it can attack you, so you're free and clear to let this thing beat the shit out of everybody at the table, let everybody do your dirty work for you while you do other things. Sadly, it's mono red, so uh Whoops, I'm here in the background. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that in there so that'll be our first blooper <laughs> sadly it's mono red I, I really wish this was like a Rakdos deck or something where you'd have I was going to say just Boros like, would be sick Boros, oh, Boros would be would be Rakdos Boros would work, sick. work too <laughs> just, just in any sort of way that you have any uh, two color yeah, would be sick just yeah. more support yeah, yeah, yeah more yeah. support more support to like have removal and or things so you can help control the game while your commander runs around a piece of shit on the table and it doesn't it, I mean, it still dies to removal but it can't be sacrificed and other things so it can't be edicted away uh, can't be sacked for value by people that have it. So it's got a lot of adva advantages. I I don't know. I haven't played it yet, personally. I It's on my to-do list. It has this weird potential of kind of like being a deck that kind of plays itself, and you're just kind of there to manage things. It's like uh, those auto-battler games. You just kind of put it on and let it do its thing, but you strategically, like, put things in place so that it does the thing the way you want it to do it, you know? So... Yeah. Does that win yeah. you games? Is there too much chaos? Is there too much shit that's out of your control for this to win you games? That's my major question mark with it. Is it like the randomness of you giving it to other people and then making decisions instead of you making those decisions? Is that going to hurt you in the long run? I don't know. It needs more testing. Yeah, this is a hard one for me. Uh, let me hear your thoughts. Uh, Ron, what do you think? I would be way higher on this on this commander if two things. One, if it costs one less. Four mana and higher mono red is just like really a really rough place to be, unless you're like Dargo, right? Which may as well be one mana, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it's it's just really tough. Um, there's very few like really high CMC uh, mono red commanders that can that can make it work in our format. Um, it kind of forces you to run a lot of uh, rituals or a lot of rocks. You're running a ton of mana just to keep it alive, you know? And I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe he's got haste either. Which is Technically does. So it you can't attack with it when you put it into play, but, but you on the next give player's it, turn, yeah. it immediately yeah, yeah, starts yeah, attacking. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it's like, like three haste, haste. right? Yeah. Like... Yeah. It's weird. It's it's a very yeah, weird yeah, yeah. wording that's, that the card has. Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't know. I think it ends up from what I've seen so far of it being played, and you know, take take what I would say with a grain of salt because I haven't played against it yet. Um, I, well, I played against it in CDH, but not in um, our format, non CPH. And from what I've seen, though, and I have seen a few matches of it being played, um, it gets it becomes overcosted really fast. And if you're not finding those rituals and ways to get enough mana to recast it, your deck literally does nothing. Yeah, yeah. very commander centric. Nothing. Yeah, which but, is a problem. Um, you know, I've seen a similar thing with like a like Sir Kara Storm deck. You know, when that was the thing back yeah. like two years ago, I think five mana. You know, see five CMC mono red, kill twice. You're just kind of screwed. And I think Alexis has a similar issue. 
What do, you, what do you think, Kunks? So I'm going to say a couple of nice things before saying how I feel about the deck. I like that the deck does force you to run a whole bunch of uh, rituals, which is great. Yeah. We're, yeah, just rituals in general, especially in a monocolor. What more do you need? Like, you can pump out Alexios on turn two with just a single Infernal Plunge and a creature. Like, you just need creature, Infernal Plunge, we're good to go. Actually, you can turn one Alexios like that. Yeah. Because we have the Lotus Puddles and Simeon Spear Guide. Yeah, but then you I do love that it gets the plus one plus one counter every turn, so it does get pretty big. I mean, it's a two, two turn clock mathematically. Yeah. It's a two turn clock. Yeah, and it does so. force your opponents to actually talk to each other and try to figure out, all right, how are we going to spread out this damage before we all just die to Alexios? It does kind of lose on like if it gets removed once or twice, we ain't seen Alexios ever again. Well, and as I said, you're you're, you're not able to control it, so you're you're giving it your opponent's the ability to choose if you win the game. Yes. Uh, without exactly. having yeah. something else, a backup plan to solve, you know, that problem. And I would assume you're running those rituals and things to make mana to be able to recast the guy. I would assume you could also be running big shit like a fireball or whatever to just finish the game off if need be before yep. they, yep. you know, stop you. But <laughs> yep. it also could be too late for that. Like, there's a lot of variables there. And again, being mono red, you're kind of limited, so... I don't know. It, it's it's a really cool design space. Um, I, I, I'm, I I just wish it was two color. Yeah, it's a sick card. I mean, it's so cool. When I saw it, I was I was like, damn, this card is like, that's exactly the kind of card I think we need in the format. But I think there are other support cards that are missing right now, like more ways to give it hexproof. You know, would be huge. More equipment yeah. that allow us to do that. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, well, yeah, just ways to make it more resilient would go a really long way. Well, with all that said, it sounds like we're all... Yeah, I'll just start. I say D. Uh, yeah, D. D. You guys agree? I, I agree. It's it's too untested at this point. Yeah. Yep. Um, with the next one, Rohan, what are your thoughts with this Sphinx? Um, super cool card. You know, it's the probably the only affinity card that works at <laughs> a commander that works for us right right now it uh is a tutor in the command zone um which is you know obviously super strong it's a mid-range artifact heavy combo deck we don't have any artifact board wipes in the format either which also is great and very few people run any kind of anti-artifact or artifact hate in their in their decks, so it kind of gets away with a lot. It has topped. It has won. It has won. 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 Lower, yeah, lower, lower. Uh, won one tournament and topped numerous others. So it's certainly a contender. Um, it's a really cool deck. It is really slow, though, because of its nature and what it's trying to do, and it's got like these combos that require a lot of pieces. It needs needs to commit a lot of space in the deck to getting to your combo and also like a ton of rocks to be able to like do the things that it needs to do. So I think that it ends up being kind of light on, on interaction. It isn't really played as like as much. Of, I think it kind of wants to be a control deck, but it doesn't really play as a control deck. You have to be a really talented player and you have to be really good at, I think if you're really good at table politics in general, this deck is phenomenal. Put that way. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. If people let you do the thing, you're set. <laughs> uh, yeah, they don't I mean, let you do the thing. That can be set for all the decks. You some that's, that's the no, same. because that's some decks, thing. even if people don't let you do the thing, you can power through that. There are decks that where you can just be like, I don't care, counter spell, counter spell. <laughs> like I'm gonna show you, like you're not stopping me. I have or I have too many other pieces. Yeah. Fine. It's like you counter this thing, I'll play another one. You kill my thing, I got another one. Like, I don't care. I don't think this deck is that kind of deck. So I, I think this list wrong. really solves a lot of issues that Demir has. Um, even though Demir has the most cards that it could tutor with in the format, I do believe that this deck specifically solves a lot because, you know, it can tutor its combo pieces and win the game. And then it uses the other tutors to go get, you know, the Ash Nods, right? I like the deck a lot. Uh, I actually yeah, think it is a great. solid Demir choice. I find it to be... So I know I spoke pretty negatively about Third Path, but Third Path is still in B tier. 
which means I still do find it to be a highly interactive, a, an incredibly powerful list overall. And I feel Sphinx, Sphinx Summoner is the exact same way. I want to put it right at the damn near top of B, right? Like, I, I think it's a solid B yeah. working its way to A, in my opinion. It's hard, right? Because the, the reason I can't say it's a, it's, it is a A tier deck is it suffers the same problem as some of the decks in B. Just like, is it Guild Mage and Disciple? Where you just see the wrong half of the deck. And then you lose, right? Yeah. And because it is like that, I think it's a solid B tier deck. And let's be realistic too, right? Is it Mage was once, once again, I know we're, I'm kind of repeating myself from the last video, was once said to be the best deck in the entire format. And I do think it's praise. You know, Lover did a great job building this deck and going yeah. through and speaking with Quarks about it and everything and really built this deck a new high. And getting this deck right there with Is It Go Mage, in my opinion, is absolutely amazing. So I vote for B. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts? Yeah, I would say B as well. It's missing that little... As you were saying, you, sometimes you see the wrong half of the deck. And I know that's an issue that Abdel Blue has. But unlike Abdel Blue doesn't have that random explosiveness that you get from like, oh, great, my one flicker got me there. Yeah, and that's like what I was saying. Like, if... The table lets you do the thing. Like, it's obvious what you're doing when you when you tutor for your stuff, right? Yeah, you show like everyone you knows what the hell you're doing. So, and you're right. It doesn't have that explosiveness. It doesn't have the thing that like you know makes like Laylor so good. Where like, you're just like, ah, they just won. What the fuck? <laughs> like, not cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. even being like, like super linear and telegraph. It's like Austin awesome Powers, powers. How, you know, getting slowly steamrolled. You're like, oh yeah, I'm dying. Oh god, you know. Oh, no. Yeah, it's even being telegraphed is fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's com- it's like the combo's coming for you guys. It's coming. You know, yeah. here it comes. <laughs> so, sounds like we all agree. Be yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with this one said, uh, I think we all could kind of say this one a little bit together. Uh, maybe not you as saying you don't know the, the whole meme <laughs> on this one. Uh, Kunks knows it. You want to take this one away, Kunks? You want to go for it? Marsh Crocodile is going to get dropped. I don't know how it got here. We just found it here. It's like we, we, we heard from a little uh, little pod, yeah, EDH pod. There was like a voice that was like... In the distance, it's yep. like this whisper. It said "Marsh Crocodile," and we we're like, hmm, "Maybe, maybe it, maybe this is a deck that goes in in the tier list." In one of the tiers, we don't know which we, one. It we did make the list. <laughs> it did make the list. It did make the list. Uh, we were supposed to have puzzle here with us uh, to do this, but sadly, it did not happen. But Alk. Shout outs to you. Um, I have played against Scoop quite a bit against this deck. She is a, uh, a thought of the past, I think, at this point, depressingly enough to say that. I, I'm very sad saying that because Marsh Crocodile actually is very, very near and dear to my heart. Um, it's actually one of my favorite cards, and my name is Gator. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> love the art, love the card. Uh, played it back in the day. But, but with that said... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to say that, but let's move on to Composite Golem. Uh, Rohan, do you want to take us away yeah, with this, this one? This, this deck, um, this commander here, it kind of represents, I think, what we, what has come to be known as like the five-color pile, um, which is a certain set of decks that are... It's, it's funny, right? Because they're looking to do a couple of different things depending on how it's built. Psycho um, Storm, right? Can we say Psycho Storm? Generally, it's trying to do... Exactly. exactly. That's the generally, flavor of the it's monster. trying to cycle, do the Cycle Storm thing, like the Popper Cycle Storm deck. Uh, it plays a, all, maybe, of the Cycle creatures. I don't, I don't actually know if it plays all of them, but it plays a ton of them. It dumps them all into the yard, and eventually it's trying to, like, Songs of the Damned, create a ton of mana, and then find a... The name, the name of it escapes me. Under Scram- City Scrounger. Under City Scrounger. Yep. Yeah. 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 To be able to loop through the deck, discard the whole deck, and find your combo pieces. And eventually hit people for 
what is the out again? It is. Oh, it has a, it has a lot. It has a lot of it different has a ways. Few, right? yeah, it has a, like yeah, it, it's like, it's a freed from the real yeah. deck as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it plays the uh, Cross and Restore. I wonder if I, it plays. I wonder if it plays Molten Gatekeeper now. If it unearths Molten Gatekeeper, did you? Uh, I believe that is one of the cards in the deck as well. Cool. Uh, there, there's a, there's a bunch of different variants so different of the list. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. A, there's a bunch. Where, where do you think this would go on a list, right? It's it's under it's, a lot of experimentation. Yeah, and there's, like, so many ways to build the deck right now. There's no one way to build the deck. Um, there's also a number of different commanders that can helm the style of deck. Um, I've seen, I think it's called Flush Reaper? Flush Former. Flush, Flush Former, Former yes. It's, three uh, mana. it's like two cards. Yes, the one black. from Conflux. And it yes. has, like, yeah, and it's and like all five to give my target creature minus three, minus three, something like that. I've seen that le- helm the deck. Um, Fusion Elemental. I've seen helm the deck. There's like a few different options. Well, where do you think it belongs in the list? It's, yeah, it's I, kinda... I've seen it do things. I've seen it do a lot of things, and I've also seen it do jack all. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, I've seen it do nothing more than I've seen it do the thing. Um, I feel like five color is really hard to support. In popper. Yeah, you the know, man, the, the mana. from what I've seen, actually, that hasn't been the biggest issue for the deck. It, it's not really finding its colors, but it plays a lot of garbage in the deck. <laughs> all these cyclers yeah. and stuff. It's all all these cards are terrible. Like yeah. the car, the card quality is rough. The card quality is well, and the, and the insanely command, like, bad. For competitive, like the general rule of thumb is generally like. You want your car, your your commander to draw your cards or be the outlet, or if you can have both, even better. You know, yep. right? yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And it, and and then after that, it's like tutors or some other sort of viability. That's like, okay, this isn't a, com- a combo piece, but it can find me all my combo pieces. Composite Golem is a pile of shit. That's six mana, <laughs> back. It does fuck all. As a commander, all it's doing is enabling you to have a five color pile. And if your five color strategy isn't even that good, then what's the point? Why not just play two colors? I don't know. Yeah. I don't like this. I don't like this. I, I guess cool, but I, I also shit on five color decks in CDH too. I don't like. <laughs> yeah. I just don't like it. Balancing the color pie is hard enough with like three colors. I don't need to. Yeah, much. I think. I think the only the only time I've seen this deck really perform is because once again there was like a, an incredibly talented player. Because fucking Bobby. Basically, if you're models. if you're really good at poker, <laughs> you can make this deck work because yeah. there's like there's like well like five counter spells. There's probably like three removal spells, and like if you're able to bluff like having all this stuff to like make someone scared enough to not go off. This deck can actually do the thing, and that's that's more of a testament to like someone like Bobby as a player. Um, but outside of that, I think this deck is a D at best. <laughs> I, I will. I, I want to. I'm going to jump out there. I think the deck should go in D because I think if somebody showed up to a tournament, they could they could get there with this deck. I'm going to throw yeah, that out. No, yeah. Literally, nobody knows what the fuck this deck is doing. Yeah, because like, it's just yeah. five we color doing weird stuff over there, and we're yeah. like, okay, this guy is basically an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't disagree. <laughs> he, he just started playing. Okay, all right. Can, can, can we agree? Composite golem D tier. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, Islane, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw you to the wolves right now. I want you to take this next one, man. Uh, Kedis and Kelleth, uh, give me your thoughts, man. This is a hyper aggressive aggro deck. What do you think? So, I haven't played with or against this deck either. I've seen a Dargo Kelleth running around, or somebody was playing that at some point. Uh, yep, yep, I saw yep. it once or twice, but um, this seems strong just in the sense that, like, your commanders are going to get big fast, and uh, your damage is going to get spread around because Kedis. And we've already kind of discussed here and there, and you guys and other people, that uh, Kedis X anything is automatically, you know, kind of positioned to be symmetrically, you know, damaging yeah. everything and potentially, you know, aggro or whatever you want to call it. So, um, and from the stories I heard, knock out the table in <laughs> not too many turns if it's left unchecked. So, Seems like it's pretty strong. Um, I don't think that it's 
bad, but I also don't really have enough information to make a really good judgment. I'm just going off of hearsay at this point. Um, yeah, okay, I'll jump in here. I, this deck is near and dear to my heart. I started brewing it with Gator. We started brewing it as a, in a little bit of a different capacity than it's been, than it's, uh, been seen in tournament lately. Um, I started building it as a pinger deck. I was like, pingers are good. You know, we all know pingers are insane. So, um, what is a what is like a really strong Boris pinger deck look like? Um, what is a good commander outside of um, the one that Alk had already brewed? Um, not Alk, uh, Ankle Sword had already brewed with like the cleric, the pinger cleric deck. Laurel Apprentice, yeah. Oh, yeah. Spirits. yeah, 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 yeah yep. not cleric. Yeah, Laurel Apprentice, yeah, which is a sick deck. Um, basically, it was after that event, I was like, oh, Boris Pingers is pretty sick. Uh, what would be really cool? Um, I thought Kedis Kelth might be might be dope because I already I already loved um, Kedis, amazing because I played with Dargo. Um, let's make Kedis stronger. How can we do that? Horse works really well, and then let's throw all the pingers in and play with artifacts. Um, I posted that to the Common Theory um, Discord, and then the Lotad, one of our um, Patreons and Discord members, he picked it up um, and started brewing it and brewed it. Ad nauseum, <laughs> like brewed and then brewed again and kept brewing like crazy. This person, like, it, like he's in Australia, but I feel like I could see like the smoke coming out of his ears. Um, <laughs> he's building this deck and really just testing it constantly um, and honing it. He made a very different list. Uh, he built it as just like a pure hyper aggro, just like really, really fast, like as blazingly fast as possible. Um, then he played it in uh, sanctuary, the last sanctuary tournament. <laughs> I, I don't know if he got a win, but he was really scary. Like, the deck was extremely scary. I played one game against it. Uh, Gator, did you play a game against it? Uh, I did not, but I know his tournament experience. Yeah, yeah. He was he was threatening the table for a win on turn four multiple times. Um, and then, then again on turn five, and then again on turn six. Like, repeatedly, you know, um, by turn three dealing, like, some ungodly like eight plus damage to the whole table, you know, like basically 24 plus damage by turn three, like it's really crazy numbers. Um, it's terrifying. And I know your daughter also plays it. She does. Like her. Yeah. 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 It's very frustrating to play against. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, the, the, yeah. The, these, these Caddis variants that uh, she plays are very, and that Lotan has played. Uh, hers is almost... So this is a weird one. It's the same concept, different cards. I believe their lists are about 24 cards different currently, but they're 24 yeah. of the same cards, which is really dumb to say it that way. It's yeah, just yeah. like yeah. one of the cards is like plus three, plus one, and first strike, and the other card is like two mana, plus three, plus zero, and make a treasure, right? Like mm -hmm. just something ridiculous. Like they're the same card doing the same exact thing, but just... Of CMC up or down in some sort of direction, just the the lists are essentially identical, just different flavors in how you like your protection or pump is what it is. Uh, yeah, I lose to it all the time. It's very frustrating to play against because uh, turn one, ride a flame into a Kedis, you're like, oh, it's not scary, and then it untaps, and it's like, ha, 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 desperate ritual, pump, 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 and you're like, crap. And you're like, oh, crap, I'm the one that just got hit with this. But then you just got like 18 to take when you're like, oh, no. The list is, is, is very good. As of right now, because it hasn't been seeing more play, I would say it's a solid C tier. Yeah. Um, so, similar yeah. to what Islaine was saying earlier. Uh, Islaine was saying, you know, let's uh, these aggro decks, you know, will help the format because it'll stop, you know, these combo decks from running around like crazy. I completely agree with that i think this deck specifically is one of the decks that will help the format entirely if more people start picking up this deck because if you don't have table time against this deck the first 10 games you play against it you will shit yourself you'll just be like uh uh Kaleth turn two sure uh Kedis turned three uh swing for two sure untap uh, sure. What are you attacking for? 64. You're like, wait, wait, what you, what number did you just say to me? They're like, yeah, I, I pumped a trigger, pump, trigger, trigger, uh, double strike trigger. 
how did you do that? Oh, this is a Lotus Petal, Rite of Flame, Desperate uh, Seeding Song, uh, Pump, Pump, Pump. And you're like, my brain just exploded. How'd you do all that math so fast, right? I do believe that the deck solely belongs in C tier as of right now, but I 100% believe it has room to grow and move its way to the top. So what do you guys think? I defer to you. That's fine. Yep, and playing locally against Caitlyn, scary-ass deck. Yeah. We're playing against it. <laughs> yep. Hey, playing against it because it's like, yep, I'm going to die. I just hope I don't see the lizard coming yeah, at yep. me. And, like, in tournament, in, uh, in the last tag for a tournament, when we played against it, I had, I had to let, I let the table know at the very beginning. I'm like, all right, we need to maul against this deck. Yep. This deck will kill us all if we do not mull against it. Yep. And thankfully, they listened to me. <laughs> because had we not all mulligan down to f- face this deck, we would have lost for sure. And we yep. got by by the skin of our teeth. Speaking of that, I do know you play Carmella, Rohan. So what are your thoughts on Carmella? I know I, you've been oh man, very exactly. down on this, and I'm not this going to disagree with you. It's a rough one for me. It's a sore spot because like, I wanted this deck to be so good for so long. I was I was so high on it um, when I first started building it and first started playing it, and it's just such a sick card. Like, it's just a cool-ass card. Like, it Rixis, is. Rixis hasty like death trigger stuff makes mana like it's, it's like spell slinger it's doing all the things i really love i'm like i'm a gracious player like i love this commander so much it's so cool it just it the deck list just doesn't work in this format in my opinion i uh, i know bobby's really high on this deck uh, he feels very strongly about it i think it can play a control you know a control game i think it's got all the tools too but i think if you do that you just become table police and you get to, you, you aren't having fun and everyone, you're just trying to stop everyone else's fun and you get to do nothing. You don't progress your board state. You know, you're not actually being proactive in the game. It's an extremely reactive deck. And I think that's, that's not really where you want to be. I mean, look at all the decks here that are like the top tier decks. None of them are highly reactive. They're mostly just trying to do their thing, right? I think it's something, it's a play pattern we even see in like, I mean, we see a lot in like, regular EDH and CDH, right? Like the decks that want to like, just like put their heads down and, and cruise through and like do their thing. Those are the decks that generally win. I mean, Gretchen, I know is like a little bit different because it's trying to chill, but even then Gretchen's still not table play, but it's accruing value and resources, but it's not trying to just like stop everything. I mean, floodgate is trying to be table police, but look what tier it's in. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't disagree. I, yeah. I think Cormel has got the same problem. It's trying to be so, table police. And then the combos that it has are the opposite of resilient. They're highly interactable. And they're and the fact that she has to like kill herself, put herself in the graveyard to do stuff, any graveyard hate just stops the deck cold. Anytime I've played against Cormella in the past year, I've been able to find an honored heirloom and they just don't don't do shit. So let, let me hit you with this one. Uh, Carmella saw playing the last Sanctuary event and the player that played it I find to be a very skillful player mm-hmm. and their exact words were I won't play it ever again in a tournament setting <laughs> yeah no and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't for the fact that they didn't believe the deck was good in fact they say the opposite they believe the deck is good but the problem is exactly what you said earlier the deck is too interactable and because it has too many ways to lose, right? They had the exhume line, but their opponent had a, uh, I think I might be getting the creatures wrong. I believe they said a gray merchant, but I think I'm wrong. And they had a flesh bag. (laughs) It was one one of those two. Yeah. It was one of those two creatures. I don't remember which one, but I, I know this deck has had that line where somebody has like a gray merchant and they can't combo off or they had the relic in play, but couldn't pop it because their opponent had a a nihil spell bomb. And it was just like every one of these situations was they lost to, they go for the combo. The opponent had a thunderclap. Boom. Their day was done. Right. So, from their experiences, so I don't disagree with Bobby saying that they find the deck to be very strong, but I think it's very strong in 
outside of tournament play. I believe in tournament play, you're going to run into more of these styles of lists. And you're going to have about... How do you beat Sir Conrad? Just in play. Uh, like, you like, literally a Sir Conrad. How do you beat it? You just you just lose, right? You can't combo, right? Like, it, it's just things you like that. Just lose, yeah. You just lose. You're like, okay, I can't combo until that Sir Conrad literally gets off the table. How do you beat a Suture Priest? You just lose, right? Like, there's these weird cards that you just lose to. And with that said, I'm going to be the hard one for this one. I think it's a drop. Um, only because of the experience that I've recently heard from this player. I do think the deck is good, but I think it is a hell of a deck trying to maneuver through tournament play specifically. I think it's right there with Azra Oddsmaker. Outside of tournament play, it's nuts. Inside of tournament play, I don't think it has the legs to get there. Yeah, and solely because he said outside of tournament play, it's still good, we leave it in D. But Azra's in drop, and Azra's insane outside of... I beat the crap out of uh, some of these beer tier decks with Azra outside of tournament play, but my games are also two and a half, three hours long. I don't know. Yeah, at least Carmelo can win under time. Can it, though? You you cannot win in any of these scenarios, right? Like, you have to wait for the spell bomb to get off the table. You have to wait for Relic to get off the table. You have to find your card to destroy the I heirloom. mean, you've convinced me to drop it, and I don't even really know what it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, all right, drop it. Yeah, the average right, turn me... that Carmella, that I found when I play it, is that... I find, like, the, the soonest I find my pieces is, like, turn, generally turn 8, turn 9, which is, like, now nowadays, that's late as hell. That's yeah, really two late. years ago yeah. when I first started playing, that was fine. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think Carmella was actually really sick back then. Like, two years ago, yeah. Carmella. I remember when people talked it up. I haven't played against it enough to really have an opinion, but, yeah, it was just, yeah. it sounds yeah. like it's got way too many weaknesses and too, hole, too many holes in it right now. Yep. Yeah, I'm good with so, dropping it then. Yep. So are we, I'm okay are with we that too. on a drop? Uh, but Franklin, I know you know this one. We've spoken quite a bit about this. What are your thoughts on Lily Splash Mentor? So I'll preface it with it's still experimental because it came out like a month ago. But in the play testing that we've done with it, it's the only deck in the format that we know that has a play pattern of I'm going to untap and I'm going to bring out every single land in my deck into play. I'll figure out a win from there. Yeah. And I think just on the merit of it's that, weird. we can probably throw it and see. It's weird, right? So I, I, okay, how, does it, so, how does it pull every land out of it? How does that work? I, yeah, there's... Okay, so this deck is really, really weird. I, don't I just know see how. it as like a shitty Derevi. You know, like it doesn't seem so, that great. So Spring it, Bloom Druid exists. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Wood Elves, Spring Bloom Druid, and uh, there's a few yeah, others. Exactly. Yeah, you flicker yeah. those. So you use Stone Hire, uh, Stone, Stone Cedar, Cedar Hire Fence. Yeah. yeah. So you use that. You blink it. You have a land that could create three mana at minimum. And then you just rinse and repeat, right? Blink it, ETB trigger, blink it, ETB, blink, 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 right? Until every land is out of your deck. But also, two, if it's a Wood Elves... You're starting to net mana. You only get your forest, but sure, you get 16 forest, right? Uh, you're, you're feeling pretty good. But it also is a deck that is different. It, so, so hear me out. It has a backwards play pattern, right? So with Gretchen, you kill the enablers, right? So you kill all the land and tappers. With Malcolm Kettis, you kill all the pingers, Right with Lane Low Reaver, same thing. Right, all all of the top decks, you do the exact same thing. Abdel, right? Kill Abdel. Mm -hmm. This deck's backwards. This deck is you kill its win conditions. So because everything, including the commander, is an enabler, a Wood Elves is an enabler. The commander, Lily Slash, enabler. Landora's enablers. Peregrine Drake, enabler. Believe it or not, Seagate Oracle is how you win the game. If you just bolt the Seagate Oracle when they try to flicker it, they can't win the game anymore, right? Like, all of these, like, dirty, like, elvish visionary, like, ETB draw a card, you bolt that, they can no longer win the game. They get all the infinite mana they want, they can do nothing with it. 
So it's like this really something like that makes me want to have like some something like an enchantment that says uh, sacrifice a land, deal one damage to each opponent. Then you could literally yeah. run like oh, three, four yeah. lands, oh. filter your everything out, and then just go sack it all, kill you all. That would be a hell of a yeah. Now enchantment. we have a fucking deck. Up until now, you've convinced me that you can get all your lands out, and then what? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, but you only drawn gas at that point. You you took out all the shitty lands. From the yeah. Place. So I so I don't disagree so, with this lane. So I I think it belongs on the list in D. It needs to be solved. Um, it but it needs solved. to be solved and fixed and played. It's seen zero play thus far. Also, its play. its ability is uh, sorcery speed, right? It says sorcery yeah, speed. Yeah, that is yeah. It's super crutch. Man, if that was in, if that super wasn't there, if that wasn't there, it would, it would also be probably be an point. A tier deck, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so D, we got to give it a chance. Uh, yeah, can yeah. we all agree, D? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so riding high on it, but <laughs> that could just be my copium. So, with the last one on our list, the finale, Kunks, I know you've played against this one. <laughs> Practically a every lot. <sighs> What's your Practically thoughts? every single tournament, I, pl- I somehow get matched up against Tony Baloney. Nothing bad about it, even though it sounds like it. First time I played against the deck, I saw the Secret Corridor and I was like, all right, guys. We are probably going to die to this card, where he just vanishes through the entire dungeon. Die to that card. <laughs> it's, in my opinion, it's one of the. It's probably the best Demir deck we have on this list because not only does it have a combo finish, the fact that Val just gets really huge and will just punch people to death is also the best. Like, probably the second best uh, mid range finish that you can ask for. Like your yeah. commander gets really huge, you kill people with commander damage while you're searching I see for your this combo. deck get stopped and then just repeatedly go for the win back to back turns. It's kind of insane. And then the first time I played against it, it's like Tony got stopped, combo got stopped, combo gets stopped again. Then the following turn, we're all we just died in battle beats. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> we're just dead to combat. Holy smokes! When did that even happen? It was like turn yeah. eight. All right, I guess we're dead. It's a it's it's a weird one. It is a freed. It's another freed deck. It it is a legitimate freed from the real deck. Uh, but it's like it's like they said. It is a beat you to death deck because my commander has indestructible and I just punch you with it. That's the annoying part too. It has a huge butt. Yeah. What? So 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 here's my negativity about it. Uh, so I, I'm with you guys. I think the deck's actually really really good. Uh, I've been incredibly impressed every time I see the deck. But I'm gonna refer to Wilson on this one. Tony, just like Hive, is its sole pilot. Now, granted, I am very impressed with both of those players when they play it. But I want to see. More people pick this deck up. I think this deck is good. It's a super cool deck. And it's cool, right? It's awesome to play against, right? Like, there's some decks on this list, like, when you see them or play against them, you're like, dude, this is so freaking cool. This is one of them. And Gator, I tell you privately all the time, I am, if Tony ever wins an event, I am super happy for him. I'll be his number one supporter. It's ironic. The the three decks that popped into my brain as soon as I said these are exciting decks to play against was Wilson Far Traveler, Sivris Cloakwood, and Val Agent, which are three background decks, which is it's just kind of funny. funny. <laughs> but ah, I think this deck has to be a solid W tier deck. I think it sits right up there with with Wilson. This deck is great. It's it's got a great control package. It's got great counter spells. The deck is the deck is good. I, yeah. I have a lot of faith in this list. Uh, yeah, what are you guys I'll, I'll still fight for A, but yeah, I want to hear I, everyone else's opinions. I think Ooh, I fight think, for A. Oh wow, that's high yeah, praise. I think if we're putting if we're putting decks like Wilson, um, Disciple, you know, in B because they have incredible incredible players. You know, like they've been they they really ride on the backs of these like insane. Really, really, really strong players in their format, but they're otherwise untested. But they maybe have a ton of potential. If we're putting them in B. I think I would also put Val in B. Um, 
until, you know, a few more people pick the lists up and really start honing it in. Um, and then I think they would then shift up to A for sure. Yep. I don't disagree. But with that said, let's put our last but not least in B. Let's move to our outros. But before we move to that, I just wanted to say, Isley, thank you for joining us this evening. It was absolutely yep. fantastic to have our editor here with us, giving yeah, us some feedback. Time. And where can they find you, Islaine? Please, before we leave. Uh, yeah, so I um, run another channel called The Possibility Swarm. We do CDH content mostly, but I do monthly popper games. Uh, I've been doing some popper commentary here and there, and then obviously I'm editing this show, so trying to get involved with this uh, side of the sphere a little more than I uh, was previously. So, yeah, um, I can... That. We'll, we'll put you know, link tree and whatnot in the show notes below. But yeah, I'm everywhere uh, under the possibility storm right easily. So. Thank you, thank you. And with that said, Kunks, take us home. Yep. So we have saw all the beautiful lists that we have in this wonderful format. Even if you see a list that interests you that's in the lower tiers, just pick them up. These decks need beautiful homes. You can be that new home. So with that, thank you, everyone. I wanted to thank all of our supporters, all of our subscribers. Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, follow us or do whatever you do on Spotify. I will figure that part out eventually. We're on TikTok under Common Theory CPDH, as well as support us on Patreon. And with that, thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Here's a shout-out to all of our Patreons. Eric Christopher, Aaron, Dax, Devin, Rohan, Little Red Loted, Kunks, and Scoob. Thank you, everyone, for all of your support.